Do you have the dream that your coaching business will one day replace your salary, retire your spouse, and take you on lavish trips around the world? Well, you're not alone. This is what we see online. So naturally, these are going to be the things that you want to do. You're going to see a lot of online coaches go out there and tell you how they made six figures in their first launch and now they're just traveling the world. You see a lot of things out there that make you wonder, when is that going to be me? Well, today I am recording this from <laughs> out at sea, but very near to the Bahamas. In my family, me and my husband, we have not made it a priority to travel. So the fact that we are on a cruise that was 100% paid by my coaching business, considering that I have a tiny audience, considering that I am not making seven figures yet, I wanted to show you how this is also possible for you, even if you're starting out in your business, even if your business is not making a ton of money, I want to tell you how we made this happen. Hi, my name is Ina Kouveni. I am a business coach and I am the host of the Get Clients First podcast. And our philosophy is that your coaching business does not need to have a big audience for you to be making six figures. And we show you how to do that inside this amazing podcast. You're going to find great interviews with coaches who have made it and solo episodes like this one, where I teach you everything I know about monetizing your tiny audience. And today, we're going to talk about paying yourself and using your business earnings for the things that you want to do in your life. So why don't we start with a little story? How did we get here? Why are we on this cruise? The last thing that I want you to think is that this is a frivolous trip that we just said, hey, we have money here to spare, which is just piling up in a bank account. What do we do with it? Very, very far from it. So I'm going to bring you into the inner workings of how all of this came about. Way back in my business, when I first started, for the first several years, I did not pay myself. I made it to six figures in my business, but that doesn't mean that I was putting six figures in my pocket. That didn't mean that my bank account was seeing six figures, just like you would see your bank account have six figures at the end of the year if you have a six-figure job, right? With your job, your expenses are your personal expenses. But with your business, your business has its own list of expenses. Your business reinvests in itself over and over again. And when you're making this little money, and I'm making just a little bit with my hands, when you're making this little money, you think to yourself, well, I just need to continue reinvesting it. What's the point of paying myself even a stipend for my time? And that's the way that I was operating. I was not paying myself. It wasn't until I finally did the steps that I'm going to guide you through in this episode that I started to realize how important it was for me to actually pay myself, even if I wasn't making a lot of money. And I'm going to tell you that story. So back in the day, I wasn't paying myself. Then I started paying myself and it was literally like peanuts. It was nothing, but it was something. Then over the past year, I decided to really start to invest in myself, in my family, in my family's well-being by definitely dispersing a lot more than I was in the past and helping out my family with my business earnings. And that really unlocked this other level, this level of realizing that I was paying my coaches more than I was paying myself. And that didn't seem correct to me. That didn't seem right. How come I am paying somebody and they are making more money than me? That, that, that dynamic did not seem right. So I went ahead to flip it. And through the steps that I'm going to guide you through in this episode. So stick around because I'm going to tell you that. But first, I want to tell you the story of how this trip came about. So last December, this is 12 months ago, 12 months ago, I organized a surprise birthday party for my husband. It was like the fifth year in a row that I organized a surprise birthday party for this man that I love so much. And after the party, I was left feeling a little bit uneasy. Like 
not just that it wasn't enough, but that I was really spending a lot of money of our personal finances to feed 20 people out of which, you know, my husband got out of it just a couple of hours of enjoyment. And it, it started to feel like, you know what, I feel like I could have taken that money for the whole dinner and I could have invested it into something else. That's some, something that he really wanted to do in his life, something that he really wanted. And I started thinking, okay, so if I didn't do a surprise dinner, and by the way, yes, I surprise him every year. And it's wonderful because he does a great job at not wanting to find out what the surprise is right? And I'm the same way. If you're going to surprise me with something, I am going to turn the other way and I'm going to turn a blind eye to anything that may seem out of the ordinary. I'm going to be like, nope, we are not ruining my own surprise. And he's the same way. So yeah, I've been able to surprise him every year, which is amazing. So for this year, I decided if I did not do a dinner, if I did not do that kind of experience, what would I do? Um, is there anything that I can do that does not require inviting a whole ton of people to sing happy birthday. <laughs> like, what would that be? And I started thinking maybe I could take him on a trip. But how do I surprise him with a trip if my husband is the one that handles the finances in my family, right? Um, he is the one that looks at the ins and outs. He's the one that manages the credit cards and the accounts and all of that stuff. Uh, by the way, this is not a commentary on how couples should handle their finances. You do you, you do what you got to do. Uh, that's just the way that it works in my family. So how am I supposed to surprise him with something as significant as a whole trip without him knowing it in his finances, without him seeing what I'm doing? So I decided last December, literally 12 months ago, I told him, listen, I need a bank account and a credit card that you do not see that I can use without you knowing. And he's like, oh my God, <laughs> is that is that going to be okay? Uh, right? He's like a little bit nervous, but of course he trusts me. I am very good with my money. It's totally fine. So that's what I was going to be using for this trip. Now, how do I fund this trip? I decided I was going to fund it 100% from my business earnings. What does that mean? That meant that for every dollar that I made over a period of 12 months, a certain percentage of it was going to go automatically into the trip fund. And I started researching all these things. And I'm going to tell you a cute story. I went on a cruise when I was 19. I went with my family and I was too young for the adult entertainment and I was too old for the kid entertainment. So I was just kind of caught in the middle. I did not find it uh, fun. <laughs> there, I mean, there was unlimited ice cream and I was able to sing karaoke one night, but I, I did not really have so much fun that I said, I want to go back on a cruise. I, you know, and my husband knew this about me. So we had this running joke that whenever anything talking about a cruise would come up, he would be like, I know in my life, I'm never going to go on a cruise. I just know that. I have resigned myself to that fact. Uh, I will see other people going on cruises and I'll be like, good for you. But that's just not something I'm going to do because my wife doesn't like it. Right. So I, when I started thinking of ideas for a trip, bingo, what if I got him a cruise? He would never suspect, suspect it. He would be completely shocked that this is happening. And that way we can stop that running gag that there's something in his life that he's never going to do because of me. So I went ahead and I researched it. And that is one of the steps that I'm going to be sharing with you today. I went ahead and I researched it. I planned for it. I saved for it. And I was able to give him the biggest surprise of his life. I even got us on first class tickets down to Florida from Boston. Um, and everything was a surprise along the way. All my husband knew was that he had to take from November 30th to December 5th, completely off of work. That's all he knew that he needed to do. He had no idea where we were going, what we were doing. I just told him, you are going to be off the grid. You better tell everybody at work that you will be unreachable those days. And my husband works 
so hard. He is in the computer field, so he gets called once, one week per month, which ends up being like four weeks out of the month. He can get called anytime for any reason. So this man is working very hard all the time for us, for the family, and he deserves a break and he doesn't know what that means. So I'm, I'm going to give this break to him. So all he knew was that he did not, he was not going to work those days and everything was a surprise. We woke up early. We went to the flight. We went to the airport. We got on the flight and he only found out where we were going because of the captain announcements on the plane. And it was just exciting. Every step was exciting. I finally got him on the Uber to go from the airport to the ship dock. And um, I, as soon as I got into the Uber, I'm sure the Uber driver knows exactly what we're doing because we're going to the pier where the cruises are. And I didn't want him to go, so you guys are going on a cruise? So I got in the Uber and I said, listen, Jonathan, this man is celebrating his birthday and he has no idea where we're going. So please do not ruin 12 months worth of a surprise for me. And he's like, okay, that's fine. And we talked, we had a lovely conversation. My husband started to get a little suspicious when we were in a lot of traffic to get to a place I was asking for our ID because there was like all the security before you get to the port and then you get to the port and they'd sent us to the wrong terminal so they told us no you're in the wrong ship go to terminal 18 and we're like and he's like wait a minute he's starting to hit he's starting to hit him right we're going on a cruise and I'm like yeah and it was incredible. We have had the most fabulous time. Today is our last day of this cruise. We went to Key West yesterday. We spent the whole day at sea two days ago, just exploring the ship and exploring the activities. And we have had the most amazing time. We cannot recommend them enough. This is the Celebrity Cruise Line. And we're on the Silhouette ship. And it's been amazing amazing so write that down put it on your vision board this cruise has been incredible my husband wants to go on more cruises right i remember two months ago we saw a commercial for a cruise and uh, i saw it and i told him jokingly you know every time that i see a cruise i remember that you can't go on a cruise because of me and i think that's so funny and he's like you know you've convinced me You've convinced me. That doesn't sound like so much fun, right? Being just locked in a boat, surrounded by water, and there's nothing else to do but eat ice cream, pizza, and shuffleboard. Like that, that's, that, that's what he thought a cruise was. Uh, so he's like, you've convinced me. We don't need that in our lives. So he's changed his tune. He wants to go on a cruise every year now. So anyway, anyways, anyways, my work is cut out for me to surprise him next year for his birthday. What, what I wanted you to know is how much this cruise experience really means to us means for me because we have not had a vacation just me and my husband without the kids since get this are you ready since our honeymoon we are celebrating 15 years of marriage this year 20 years as a couple and he's turning 42 right let's say there's like a perfect combination of celebrations that we're doing in this trip and we had not done this since our honeymoon. We needed this. We needed to do this. So I am so happy that we've had the most blissful three days. I can't believe we are down to our last day. I don't want to leave. <laughs> this has been amazing. We'll get back to home and the kids and everything else tomorrow. But now we've had this break where we can see that our dreams can come true. Where we can see that it's not all just work. It's not all just waiting for something to happen in, in, in your life, right? You don't have to wait. You can actually start to make things happen. Now, it does take a little bit of time. It took me 12 months to save for this trip. So I want to give you three tips on how this could be you next year. All right, why don't we start there? Let's start with tip number one, and that is you need to start paying yourself. Because I feel like if I hadn't started paying myself and started paying myself a significant amount every single month from my earnings, then I wouldn't have had the mindset, the state of mind to actually save for something as big as a trip. I don't think I would have because I would have still been thinking, no, 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 my business needs to be paying down its own debt. I got into a ton of debt in my first couple of years in my business because I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't know how to invest right. So I'm still paying down that debt, 
right? So I'm like, no, 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 I need to take that money, pay down debt. I don't have, I don't have money for this. I just need to, once I pay down my debt, I'll go, you guys, paying down debt is going to take some time. Paying down things, keeping your business running, all of that takes money. Don't delay the fact that you need to pay yourself as an entrepreneur. The fact that this has to be in it. You have to be in this for you. This has to give you something in return, not just make enough money to pay other people, to make other people's dreams come true. You got to prioritize yours. That's why you're doing this business. So you need to start paying yourself. So what I was going to tell you is that when I started paying myself, all I did was set aside, like it was something like 1% of every dollar that arrived in my bank account would come to my pocket. And I think that amounted, if you want to do the math, be my guest, I think that amounted to about $40 a month. Like that's it. That's all I was allowing myself to pay myself was $40 a month. And I did that for an entire year. And all that was, was an exercise in teaching my mind about the value of paying myself, of giving myself money. And you know what really started turning things around? Is when I read the book, Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. If you want the link, because I know Michalowicz is a little bit of a, a little bit long to to spell right here. If you just want the straight link, click on the link in the show notes right here, or go to getclientsfirstpodcast.com slash profit first. And it will take you straight to the Amazon link. This is an affiliate link. Thank you very much for your support. But I swear by that book. That book taught me that you don't calculate how much you're going to be spending in your business based on how much money you make. It taught me that you can have as many earnings and as much profit as you want, regardless of how much money you make, right? What I mean is obviously, you know, you have a certain amount that you're making and then you calculate your profit first and then everything else has to be expenses. And if your expenses are being way too much, much more than what you want your profit to be, then that means that you cannot afford those expenses. It gives you a really clear, a really clear line to draw when it comes to expenses that you cannot let your expenses be a hundred percent of your revenue. You just can't. So I started paying myself forty dollars a month. That's all it took for me to start un- like tapping into that. Okay, I need to start paying myself. Thing. So that's my tip number one for you: read that book or listen to that book. I'm an audiobook kind of girl. Listen to that book, Profit First and start to pay yourself whatever that means to you you need to start doing this even if it's like pennies on the dollar every month you gotta start thinking that you deserve to be paid for your time in this business okay that's number one number two if you are going to plan a vacation or if you're going to plan to retire your spouse, or if you're going to plan to quit your job, you got to start by dreaming big. You got to start by doing the math on that big dream. When I set out to plan for this trip, I did not look up, okay, what is the smallest cabin we can have in the cruise? I did not look up, okay, what is the cheapest ticket and what is the, the, what is the time of year where I should be buying my plane ticket so that it will be the cheapest amount? No. What I did was I dreamt really big. I said, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to stay for an entire year, I'm going all out. I got us a VIP package. You guys, they have given us the best service ever. We have a private restaurant. We have a private sun deck. Um, our, we have a private butler who came and decorated the room for my husband's birthday. And it's amazing. It's been a great experience after a great experience because we got that VIP dream. That's what I was doing my math on. Not the smallest little bit of anything. I dreamt really big. So if you're going to be doing the math on something, if you're going to be saving for something, I want you to dream really big and say, okay, how much does it actually cost to do that thing? If I want to retire my spouse, how much should I be making in my business? If I want to go on a trip, how much is that trip the way that I really want to go on that trip for? And have that math in front of you at all times. Because if you don't even know how much it costs, how are you supposed to save for it? How are you supposed to dream for it? How are you supposed to manifest it? You got to know the numbers. Know your numbers. What do you need to be making? 
how much do you need to save? How much should you be saving per month if you want to do this in a couple of years, maybe? Play with those numbers and know them by heart because those are your goals. And finally, number three is once you've made your decision that you want to take your spouse on a lavish vacation, that you want to retire your spouse, that you want to quit your job, set a deadline for it and start saving. Start putting that money religiously away as if you're paying a coach, as if you're paying for a program. You've never missed a payment on a program, even if it was super expensive. You've always made it work. How come you're not applying that same rigor and that same discipline to you, to making your dreams come true? Why is that? So I want you to calculate how long it's going to take you to get there, how much you need to be putting away from your earnings every month, and every month automatically withdraw that from your checking account and pretend that money doesn't exist. That's what I did. I saved a certain amount of money for nine months because nine months is when the cruise bill was due. That's how much I saved. And I never looked back. I just put blinders on and I said, okay, that money is like it doesn't exist to me. And I'm going to have to make do with everything else. And I'm telling you the Profit First book really helps you with this mentality. So that's what you need to do. Number one, start to pay yourself. Start to Tap into that possibility that this business can actually serve your dreams. Number one, read that book. Go to getclientsfirstpodcast.com slash profit first. Getclientsfirstpodcast.com slash profit first. Go get yourself that book and start changing your mind about paying yourself now. Number two, dream big. Don't dream small. Know your numbers. Know how much you need to be making in your business in order to make your dreams come true. If you don't know that number, you have some math to do. Go and do it today. Do that now. How much does it cost? How much do you need? And that is your new goal. And number three, start putting that money away religiously every month into a different account. Disburse it out of your business. This is very important. My business did not pay for this trip directly. I did not use a business credit card because it's very important for the for tax purposes and for legal purposes that your business is not being used like your private personal PE bank. It's very important that you're properly disbursing funds to a personal account and then you can use them there. So that's why I asked my husband for that account so that I can disperse from business to personal every single month. I am not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. I'm telling you from experience, you just got to do this. If you need to consult a lawyer, please do. If you need to consult a CPA, please do. This is all anecdotal, not legal advice. I am not a lawyer and I'm not qualified to advise you on what to do with your legal engagement, <laughs> with your legal, I don't even know how to say it, with your legalese. I'm not qualified to do that. So take this as an anecdotal piece of like nudge so you can go talk to a lawyer, talk to a CPA to see what is possible. All right. So we got our three things that you need to do and you're going to do them now. Start paying yourself. Now, if you will go over to the YouTube channel and if you're in the YouTube channel right now, I'm about to show you what I can see right out my window. I'm going to show you a tour of our suite and I'm going to show you some pictures from our trip as inspiration so you can start putting these in your vision board and if you're looking for a place to start like Ina I'm not making enough money in my business yet listen you can have a six-figure business you can have a six-figure offer even if you have a small audience all you have to do is come to my master class I'm going to teach you all about how to do that. We're going to do this together. Go to tinyaudiencemasterclass.com. The link is in the show notes below. Go to tinyaudiencemasterclass.com. It's a completely free class where I te I'll teach you how to have a six-figure offer, even if you have a small audience. What are you waiting for? Save your spot right now. And I will see you next week with another episode. You come in here. I'm gonna take you to the room first because my husband is taking a shower.